What's going on guys? Morty Mouse in the house and welcome back to Extinct, where we discuss the rise and fall of theme park attractions that no longer exist in their original form. This episode is sort of a continuation of our last video. We discussed the rise and fall of the People Mover, and today we'll be discussing what rose in its place. A ride that many would call one of, if not Disney's worst of all time, Rocket Rods. If you want to see more about what happened before the Rocket Rods came to exist, watch our video on the People Mover and then come right back here. Rocket Rods was meant to be the flagship e-ticket attraction of the new Tomorrowland. This is the iteration of Tomorrowland with the really odd color scheme. Bronze, gold, brown, and green. Yes, you heard me, green. Costing about $25 million to make, that's one fourth of the $100 million budget for Tomorrowland's total renovation. Rocket Rods would open on May 25th, 1998, and it was a high-speed thrill attraction that sat in Disneyland's Tomorrowland on the very track that once held the People Mover itself. It was supposed to be a sort of futuristic rapid transit system in which you'd ride a Rocket Rod XPR, Experimental Prototype Rocket, that went up to speeds of 35 miles an hour, shortening the once 16 minute track down to just three minutes. Fun fact, this was the very first Disneyland attraction to have a single rider line. This was due to three reasons. Number one, the ride vehicles held an odd number of people at five. Two, lines were long, and I mean very long. And finally three, the ride had limited capacity. <laughs> I mean each rocket only held five people. Come on. And five people didn't always get into each rocket. It was the complete opposite from the people mover's ability to move tons of people per hour. The staging area where guests boarded was similar to a drag race. A futuristic streetlight would change from red to yellow, and then to green, which would prompt the ride to then shoot off. Now the idea of the ride made sense. People were looking for thrill rides, and this seemed like the perfect opportunity to create one at a relatively low cost. The problem is that Disney really decided to go really low, and the following is a direct symptom of this. Instead of the ride weaving in and out of the buildings, the ride had a major flaw. After speeding down a straightway, the ride would come to a complete stop. You see, because of the cost cutting, none of the curves were banked. Not one. They would have to slowly go around each corner. This meant a ton of slowing down and speeding up throughout the ride. The ride went through show buildings, just like the People Mover, but there was no time to enjoy the sights. Oh no. The People Mover was a nice, relaxing ride. The rocket rods were meant to mimic the way that humans cared less for their journey and simply wanted to get where they needed to go. Instant gratification. It even had a four second willy, which was pretty darn cool. Spoiler alert, <laughs> that didn't last very long. The bad mechanics of the vehicle meant that the ride would have to be emergency stopped many times throughout the day. Tires wore out quickly and there were constant technical difficulties with computer systems. The ride caused structural damage to the foundation of the track itself. They were built for the slow moving people mover after all, not a high speed, much heavier rocket rod. Now the queue was a highlight of the attraction. There were old ride cars from Rocket Jets, Space Mountain, and the front of a Mark III monorail. You'd get to walk through the old Circle Vision 360 theater with a pre-show explaining the importance of transportation. The ride was set up for success but due to cost cutting, it just didn't work right. This totally wasted such a great idea, such great theming. The ride was a failure. The ride even closed down just a little over a month after its grand opening on July 6th, 1998. It stayed closed for three months before reopening in October, 1998. It would eventually close for good on September 25th, 2000. This was originally supposed to be a temporary closure as well that would last until spring of 2001. It wasn't until April 28, 2001 that both the Los Angeles Times and the Orange County Register reported that the Rocket Rods would never reopen. Disneyland Resort president at the time, Cynthia Harris, had this to say. Conceptually, this was a wonderful attraction. However, the complexities of operating Rocket Rods in a way that makes sense for the resort while providing our guests with a memorable experience simply have not come together. 
Our best recourse is to close rocket rods and start over with something that will be more conducive to the space requirements and that will be more widely accepted by our guests. It would be the very budget cuts that left the ride's turns unbanked that would be the ride's eventual downfall. It will be remembered as one of Disney's worst rides ever. But the truth is that Rocket Rods wasn't all that bad. It was a failed experiment that Disney was able to learn from and improve upon. As someone who got to actually ride the ride, it was a lot of fun. It was the precursor to ride ideas that include Test Track and one of my personal favorites, Radiator Springs Racers. Now, the track sits empty, beckoning Disney's Imagineers to find a way to bring it back to its original glory. Part of the queue is now home to Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters. It sits as this reminder. Don't forget to enjoy your favorite rides while you still can. Cherish them. Love them. Because someday, they may too be extinct. Thank you guys so much for joining us on our fourth episode of Extinct. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you smash that like button and let us know why in the comments below. If not, then don't be afraid to dislike and do the same. Subscribe for more videos like this, click that bell to make sure you see them, and please share with your friends to help us out. As always, I'm your host Morty Mouse. I'll see you later, or I'll see you at another time.